Getting a bad review over the holiday sales season can feel devastating. Not to mention, if you're currently striving to maintain a star seller badge on Etsy, you might be wondering how losing your star seller status affects your shop in the long run. Which is why today, we're discussing things like prevention tactics, what you can do if you get a bad review, and what getting a bad review on Etsy truly means for your success. For those who are new here, my name is Starla Moore, founder of the Handmade Alpha Academy for Etsy sellers and manager at eRank.com, Etsy's most popular SEO tool. And over the next few weeks on Etsy, we can expect a huge spike in traffic as we kick off the holiday shopping season. In fact, in Etsy's 2021 Q4 report, Etsy revealed that the platform saw $43,000 per minute in gross merchandise sales during their five-day Cyber Week sale. Though Etsy will technically begin their sale a little bit earlier than that. I'll go ahead and put the exact dates for that up here in the corner. And if you haven't started preparing for the sale already, you seriously do not want to wait. So be sure to click the link up here and down below to grab my free Black Friday toolbox, which includes a daily checklist, tutorials, a holiday graphics pack, and a group coaching call with me taking place on November 12th. If we head over to erank.com, we can see that searches for the word Christmas are already on the rise. And this uptick in holiday shoppers means two things. One, we can expect to see more shop traffic and hopefully more sales this month. And two, with more sales comes more room for angry customers to wiggle their way out of the woodwork, wielding the potential to ruin your holidays. So when it comes to bad reviews, prevention should obviously be our first course of action. It's easier to stop a bad review than it is to deal with one after it's already been left in your shop. On November 3rd, Etsy sent an email announcing an all new plan for holiday shipping delays. I'll leave a link down below with the full article of updates that they've made, but here are the cliff notes. When Etsy sees that major carriers are experiencing delays, they'll automatically update estimated delivery dates for those specific routes and locations to help shoppers get a more accurate estimate of when their orders will arrive. They'll also communicate delays to affected customers, letting them know that packages may arrive late due to mail carriers, not the Etsy sellers themselves. They also mention that they'll be adding banners across Etsy and in their order confirmation emails, letting shoppers know about major delays. And they'll also be sending shoppers a digital card that they can give to their recipients to let them know that they're getting something special from Etsy, but it's a bit delayed. To help eliminate buyer confusion, I recommend placing the most important information about your products in one of your 10 listing photos, rather than just in your product descriptions. Over the years, Etsy has made our product descriptions ridiculously hard to find, causing many shoppers to miss important details, such as materials, size, expected arrival time, and more. So even if a shopper does miss your product description, it's still very likely that they'll look at your 10 listing photos. And while we're on the topic of listing, photos, I also recommend adding your holiday shipping cutoff dates into one of these 10 images. As of right now, all major mail services, including the USPS and Royal Mail, have published their holiday shipping deadlines. However, in the 10 years that I've been selling online, I can tell you from experience that these dates are never correct. So I recommend adding at least one week to the dates that these services recommend. Post these cutoff dates in your 10 listing photos your product descriptions, your Etsy cover photo, your shop announcement, and your FAQ sections. And if a customer places an order after your shipping cutoff dates, send them a quick message that says, Hey Bob, I just wanted to make sure that you're aware that you placed your order after my guaranteed holiday shipping deadline. I'm going to send your order out as quickly as possible, but it likely will not arrive in time for the holidays. If the item was needed by the 25th, please let me know and I'll be happy to cancel the order for you. Bad reviews have a lasting impact on your shop. So if the customer would like to cancel the order before you've started on it, this is a much better outcome than dealing with an angry customer later on. And no, cancellations and refunds have no negative impact on your shop. So if it's possible, give the customer 24 hours to cancel before you start their order if it's placed after your holiday deadline. Now that we've talked a bit about prevention, let's discuss bad reviews and what you should do if you find that a customer has left a bad review in your shop. 
It's important to note that though it may feel a bit upsetting, a four-star review is not considered a bad review. So if you receive a four-star review on Etsy, don't panic. If it's truly something that's bothering you, reach out to the customer with a message that says something like, Hi Bob, thanks so much for your review. I'm always looking for ways to improve my products, so if you have a moment, could you please let me know what I could have done to earn a five-star review? Your feedback helps me to learn more about what I can do better. Have a great day. Now, let's assume that you have a review that is three stars or less. On Etsy, you have the option to respond publicly to reviews, which gives you the opportunity to let other shoppers know how you handle situations such as these. But wait, don't rush to respond to that negative review yet. Once you respond publicly to a review, it's locked in. The customer can't change it and Etsy won't remove it. So it's important to first see if anything can be done about the negative review. Etsy removes negative reviews that violate any of the following policies. If the review contains private information, if the review contains obscene, racist, or harassing language or imagery, if the review violates Etsy's anti-discrimination policy, if the review contains prohibited medical drug claims, if the review contains advertising or spam, if the cause for the review contains only things that are outside of the seller's control, such as a shipping carrier, Etsy themselves, or a third party. Now, this is a big one, because if the customer mentions USPS, Etsy, or if they say something like, I could have bought this cheaper at Walmart, you may be able to get this review removed. If the review contains threats or extortion, for example, if the buyer says, I'll remove the bad review if you send me another item, this would qualify as extortion. Or if the review includes shilling or otherwise falsely inflates a shop's review score. If the review violates any of these terms, report the review to Etsy. If the review doesn't violate these terms, unfortunately, Etsy won't remove it, even if the review seems unjust or dishonest. Your next course of action should be to reach out to the customer directly. Remember, be kind and professional, but don't allow the buyer to bully you. Hey Bob, I was so sad to see that you weren't happy with your most recent order. I'm always happy to fix any issues with my items and would love the opportunity to make the situation right for you. Then, if possible, give the customer a few options to select from. This little psychology trick will allow the customer to feel control over the situation, giving them a sense of ownership over the resolution that they've chosen. A few examples might be, the customer returns the item for a full refund. The seller issues a partial refund or a refund for the shipping price, which is ideal for items that arrive late or damaged. The seller offers a coupon for a future purchase. The customer sends the item back to the seller in exchange for a different item. These are just a few ideas, so try to choose at least two that you can adapt for your own business model. After the customer has selected their ideal resolution and assuming that they're being polite in their messages, you might say, thanks so much, Bob. If you're satisfied with this resolution, it would help me a lot if you considered updating your review to reflect your experience once XYZ has arrived. And please don't hesitate to let me know if you have any additional questions. I'm here to help. Remember, not all customers will change their reviews and some may not even respond to you. If you've done everything that you can do to resolve an issue with a customer and they still will not change the review, that's okay. Next, let's discuss what really happens to you when you get a negative review. Assuming you can't get the review removed by Etsy and the customer is not willing to change that review, it may be an appropriate time to respond publicly to the review. And keep in mind, the customer who left the negative review likely won't even see the response, nor will they get a notification about it. Because ultimately, this response isn't actually for them. It's for other shoppers who see the negative review and you should write it not as if you're addressing the customer who left the bad review, but as if you're addressing future shoppers. For example, if someone said, this product was too small, very disappointed, you might respond with, I apologize that you were not happy with the size of your item. All product dimensions are listed both in my listing description as well as in my listing photos. Please reach out to me if you would like to work towards a resolution. I'm always happy to help. This tells future shoppers that the negative review was left without the customer seeking a resolution directly from the seller first and that the issues with the sizing were not at the fault of the seller. When it comes to getting a bad review, it can feel incredibly disappointing and sometimes even infuriating when the review seems unjustified. But as long as you aren't allowing negative reviews to pile up in your shop, bad reviews aren't the end of the world. Use them as an opportunity to learn how you can improve your product and how you can express 
less important information that customers may just be missing. And moving forward, your best course of action is to strive for amazing customer service in an effort to bury that negative review under a pile of positive reviews. If you snag my free Black Friday toolbox that I mentioned at the beginning of this video, the SSAR swipe files included in that package can actually help you to do this even faster. Now, for those who are striving to maintain star seller status, you may be wondering what will happen to your shop if you lose your star seller badge? Will you lose your search ranking? Will your shop be shadow banned? Will customers stop buying from you? I've talked about the Star Seller program a lot over the last year, and as of right now, my opinions have not changed. The Star Seller program is something designed to make you feel nice. It's a pretty star sticker on your t-shirt that Etsy gives you if they think that you've done a good job. But as of right now, Star Seller status has no impact on your search ranking, your listing quality scores, or even customer perceptions. In fact, a majority of my own six-figure sellers all report that they have seen no difference in sales between having Star Seller and not having a Star Seller badge. And a quick analysis of E-Rank's Top Sellers report shows us that Etsy's number one top selling shop doesn't have a Star Seller badge either. Bottom line, the Star Seller badge is nice to have, but it shouldn't be a cause of stress or panic, especially over the holidays. And speaking of the holidays, many of you have been asking about my December coaching program, which we only open twice a year. So if you've struggled to build a profitable brand on Etsy and you need an exact roadmap that will teach you exactly how to get there, my own Handmade Alpha Academy is opening on December 1st for enrollment. HAA is my nine module training program that teaches sellers how to build, market, and grow dominant brands on Etsy step by step. In the Handmade Alpha Academy, I teach you how to define your target audience, how to use proven psychological triggers in your shop and marketing to attract that ideal customer, and how to build a perpetual traffic funnel so that you have more control over the money that you make from your business. As of right now, we are currently the only Etsy course in the world built on a foundation of neuromarketing, which is why we have over 900 successful students, many of whom run their businesses full time. Not to mention, I'm so invested in your Etsy success that I personally buy each of my students a 12-month E-Rank Pro subscription, so you can utilize the very best tools to grow your business. If this sounds like something that you may be interested in checking out for your own business growth, I've added a link up here and down below somewhere where you can learn more about the program, our success stories, and the class curriculum. Overall, holiday success on Etsy means treating customers how you expect to be treated when shopping online and providing the very best service possible to those you serve. And with a little science, a lot of data, and some help from a trusted Etsy expert, you'll be well on your way to Etsy success. Cue the funky lo-fi beat.